Next Wave DV presents NAB 2013. Made possible by Kessler Crane, innovative tools for filmmakers. Red Rock Micro, introducing the one man crew. Zeiss, we make it visible. We're here at Convergent Design talking about 4K, talking about monitors, talking about new workflows, and basically consolidating stuff that you might not actually expect to be in one device. We're here with Jim. Now, Jim, you guys have made some amazing recorders. You've got a great reputation in that. You've now decided to create a great looking monitor, but you said, hey, let's make it do two things. Until so you're doing a monitor and a recorder, but you're allowing people to kind of pick and choose what device that they need by only purchasing one device. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, it all came from the idea that basically you need a monitor to start with. And whether you're a DSLR shooter or you've got a camera and you really like to expand on it, you want a monitor. So first out of the gate, it comes as a monitor. Uh, we have two models, the uh, Odyssey 7 and the Odyssey 7Q. The difference between the two is the 7Q stands for quad, and it will let you do four inputs and uh, four outputs. So you can configure it to do four simultaneous recordings if you want. It has more logic on board, it can do more things. Now, you guys have made recorders, and we've seen a lot of recorders that have screens on them. Tell me how this is not just a screen, it's a, it's a true professional monitor. What we wanted to do was start with one of the best panels in the industry, which is this uh, OLED panel. It's a 7.7 inch panel. Uh, the video size is 720p, so it's 1280 by 720. Uh, terrific contrast ratio because it's only and we thought man it's easy to push recording features down into a monitor perhaps easier than it is for monitor folks to push recording features into a monitor plus you get all the advantages of the extra processing power so you can do more histogram related things more analysis related tools basically you can make a superior monitor of that lies dormant as a recorder until you need it. So now like a camera like the FS700, it's got a few things, it's got a histogram, but there's there's always that lacking. It'd be great if there's a waveform, it'd be great if there's a lot of those extra features in there. What kind of features do you guys have in here? Well, we're going to have uh, the full vector scope, the one-to-one -one pixel peeping, uh, focus assist, some really advanced uh, styles of focus assist that really look nice, frame lines, uh, basically a full complement of things you would expect on a monitor costing twice as much, three times as much. And so we're not just talking about peaking and, and, and expanded focus. We're actually talking about some professional features in here. And, and I'm seeing this right now. It, it looks gorgeous. This is probably the most accurate. Um, I'm, I'm used to working with the FS700, so that's the most accurate image I've seen on a monitor for what it actually kicks out. Well, the, the beauty is, is that we can work with uh, histograms and RGB parade and, and a variety of other things that really make it a, a fun and useful analysis tool as well. Uh, people have been asking for RGB separation for a long time and they rarely get it. So now can you do also like LUT tables um, or for if you want to have like a very uh, high dynamic range image but you also want to see what it, what it might look like with a baked in color grade? Absolutely. If you were to start with the Alexa or let's start with the F3, the Sony F3, S-Log. Well, we'll be able to put a uh, LUT in so you can look at this in Rec. 709. Uh, corrected. Same with C log. Same with all the flavors of log that we work with Canon log as well. Right, so I'm getting excited. This is a great looking monitor. Now let's talk about the actual recorder functionality. Well, that's what's great about this is that you only have a recorder if you need it. You could live with this product as a monitor for years and never need the recording features. But let's say you're a DSLR shooter and you've decided, well, it's time to do something better than the onboard recording. Or EX1, F3 user, whatever, you're using a compressed format that is in the 35 megabit range and you want to go better. Well, uh, you can simply purchase a codec license from us. It gives you a bundle of codecs, uh, starting with DNX HD and all of its flavors, and another codec that we cannot mention at this point in time, but people are probably quite familiar with. So this, this, this is something new. We're not used to this type of recording rental fee. Uh, I think people might be a little scared of it. They're, they're used to the, uh, the freemium methods where you get it, but then you got to nickel and dime the rest out of it. How is this still going to be very competitive with other recorders or existing recorders that you have? Well, by starting at a monitor at a good price, we're then able to add a recording feature, and still the price is not significantly higher than a standalone uh, ProRes or DNX HD recorder. 
So do you have any any numbers that you can provide us for what to, somebody can expect for either the rental or the purchase of those enabled features? Um, we are going to do everything we can to keep that in the ballpark of the other recorders that you see on the market. So it will not be a surprise or it will not be a hardship. You're either starting right now, I think as a comparison, this is a little bit under some of the other monitor makers' prices for this kind of a panel in the monitor. So you can see that there's some room there that we can come in and still be a very effective price solution for that. All right, so what about the recording medium? We're seeing these SSD drives, but yes. is this proprietary than your own design? Uh, what we have to do is use inter cla enterprise class uh, two and a half inch SSDs that have been uh, tested extensively by us. The reason is is that it's not just the DNX HD 220 megabit, 280 megabit kind of ranges we're dealing with. The, this media has to work with the entire range of professional cameras that are available, up to and including Canon RAW, which consumes a tremendous amount of megabytes per second. Uh, these are rated at 500 megabytes a second, and that will allow us to do just about anything on one, and anytime we cross the threshold, we have two, so we can do a RAID to, to carry over the data in the recording. So there's there's two models, there's the 7 and the 7Q. What are the differences between those two? Well, the 7 is designed specifically for a single camera. Um, the 7Q has quad recording and quad monitoring. It would be more at home in the DIT's cart than it is on the camera itself. That's one of the variations. It also has a lot more logic on board. It's got a much more expensive and complicated and detailed uh, FPGA inside it that allows it to do all kinds of fun things that we need to do with image processing. A lot of cases you'll run into cameras that require you to not only work in a codec, but do a debayer and do some other tricks, maybe some image processing on top of it, and then apply a lot. That's a lot of logic, and that's why we have two models. And the price point for both of them is, is still very reasonable for that. So um, you, you guys have mentioned functionality with the FS700. We still have a lot of question marks for those of us that are users uh, as to exactly what 4K is going to look like. Um, what's, what can you say, what, what can we expect for 4K out of the FS700, and how is that going to work? Which model is it going to work with, and stuff like that? Well, almost all of the FS 700s, to my understanding, will need to be uh, adjusted by Sony in a factory setting, so we'll have to send them in. But when that is done, we will be able to do a couple of exciting things. One is with high speed. Um, right now, uh, it's difficult to record uh, high speed for any length of time. You have a burst that you can do. Well, the beauty is, is we'll be able to do 2K uh, at 240 frames per second for the length of the media. So, you know, if you have a 960 gig card, that's a lot of recording time. Uh, the other, th uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, for, for that 2K signal, what, uh, do, you, do you know what uh, the compression is going to be in that? Are we talking 8 bit still, or is it going to be 10 bit? Uh, do you know if Sony's going to be opening that up outside of just the, the chip? Because obviously, if I if I hook up a recorder to this right now, all I get is 8 bit. I get nothing else. Uh, 4K is what we're looking for, but we also like the idea of having something else to work with. I, I'm loving what you're hearing there. What is that 2K signal going to be? Are we, is it 8 bit, 10 bit? Or? It's going to be raw, and it will be at least 10 bit. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay, so what can you tell me about 4K then? Well, 4K is a little bit trickier. Uh, the camera was originally designed to work with the Sony recorder, and uh, there has to be some method to get the signal out of the camera and into our recorder. Uh, Sony puts out a compressed 4K RAW, and what we do is we uncompress it and then re-record it as raw, or there may be some possibility in the future of doing it as a, uh, another medium that is a baked in RGB compressed codec, but at 4K. So, um, 4K on here, is that you're going to be doing the debayering in there. Uh, it does work with the Q model, not the, the standard 7 model, because it that's needs correct. that extra processing that's power correct. in that. But you're still talking about a price point that's much lower than what Sony has only introduced so far, and we haven't seen anything. I, you know, I don't see a working one sitting next to me. Um, and also, 
we're talking about a, a single device. Because one of the things that was a downside to me looking at Sony's method is it's another giant module that sticks on the back of the camera, makes it a little bit more unmanageable, and I still have a monitor on my camera anyways. So you can cram this into one device, I'm very, very interested. Uh, so what can we expect for ship dates uh, and availability on these? Well, uh, initially it looked like we were going to start with the 7, but we, the demand and the interest has been to get the queue out as quick as possible, especially in light of this announcement with Sony. So we're looking at uh, shipping the uh, 7Q in July, and uh, the codec, uh, the ability to use the Sony, uh, all the variations of that uh, to follow late summer, sometime like that. And uh, your, the, the various codecs that you guys are trying to add on, the, the agreements that you're working out, uh, what kind of a time frame can we expect for those additional additions? Well, in terms of uh, the, what we call the compressed codec pack, which would be DNX HD and another very popular codec, looking at the same time as the monitor ships, so in July. Oh, very good. So we're actually going to see this thing working in just a few months. Yes. We can order it online. And, and again, remind us of the two price points for these two monitors. We're looking at, and I have to check my uh, cheat sheet here, $12.95 for the 7 and $22.95 for the 7Q. Very good. Well, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate really excited it. about this. Thank you very much. Glad to see you. Subscribe to Next Wave TV, where filmmakers get educated.